Good morning and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be starting part three of this walleye project and I'm going to be working on the fins. I've uh, kind of saved you the monotony of uh, watching me cut them out. Um, so this is going to be kind of a short video today. I'm going to work on these and I'll show a little bit as I go and then show you the finished project when we get there. Let me turn this fan off. It's 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 already it's eight o'clock in the morning and it's already 90 degrees and 98 percent humidity so it's horrible out here um but anyway um i'm uh gonna work on these fans today and um i'll show a little bit then i'll show them at the end when i get finished um just because that's just a, a boring monotonous process not boring to me but it's boring to watch uh, but I want to take a second to talk about a couple friends of mine um, that I've met um, but one of the good things about doing this channel and carving and getting out in the in social media on Facebook is I've met a lot of people through the channel through the channel here and then uh, on social media and uh, one of them is, uh, and I've mentioned his name before here, is uh, David Okonski. Uh, David lives up in New York, and uh, uh, we started talking um, uh, several months ago, seven, eight, six, seven, I don't even, I've lost count, six, seven months ago. And uh, David has just been tremendously helpful to me, um, giving me tips and tricks, and uh, he's, he's sent me uh, a lot of patterns, and uh, it's just, He's just been helpful along the way, and uh, and I, I think I mentioned this before in one of the, one of the other videos. Uh, I bought this Fordham and was looking for a Fordham, and David knew of one up uh, near him, and uh, I think the lady had it for sale. I think her husband had passed away or something, and she was selling off some of his equipment. But David took the time to go look at the Fordham. To make sure it was in good working order he bought it packaged it and sent it back to me and i just i just thought that was just really kind and generous that he would take the time to do that i paid him back of course but um but i just that's a great tool it's like brand new i mean come in the box it was just it was perfect i don't know how i've gotten along without it uh, but i really appreciate his help um, another person that i've met uh, through uh, some Facebook groups. Uh, his name's Ken Johansson, and he's from Oregon. And uh, Ken has also been, I don't think he has a YouTube channel, but he does post a lot in, in Facebook carving groups. Um, but I don't think he has time to do, <laughs> I don't think he has time to do uh, a YouTube channel. I think he's got so much uh, commission work to do. Um, but anyway, Ken's also been a big help and, and has given me a lot of valuable advice and, and on tips and tricks on and working on these fish. So I really appreciate his help also. Uh, another guy that I met here just the other day um, on a Facebook group, I had actually seen his, he's got a YouTube channel also um, called Choose Your Own Path. And I had actually seen some of his videos in the past about while going through looking at wood carving videos and the first thing that stood out to me was uh, his enthusiasm and passion for doing it I think he's fairly new to wood carving um, he's he does a lot of other work on his uh, channel also a lot of some diorama miniature diorama stuff um, but I can just tell that he has a passion for it and it's it's really refreshing to watch and it's kind of funny how <laughs> how we got to talking um i didn't know his name his name is uh richard vorio and he's from canada so that's the other cool thing is all these people that from all over the country that i've met um that's that we get to talk and on a almost on a daily basis and uh it's just neat that we can share 
tips and tricks and information from across. I'm in Arkansas, so um, I've got another friend that just got uh, Bo Weissman, and uh, he's in Sweden. Uh, he was one of the guys that had just um, won uh, Best in World with uh, his permit carvings in uh, in the in the competition. Um, but getting back to Richard, um, we met on the Facebook page. Um, I, like I said, I didn't know his name. I didn't connect his name with his YouTube channel. And he had posted a YouTube video that he had done in this group. And um, it was he was talking about razor tip wood burners and how he didn't like their fish carving tips. And <laughs> it was... It was kind of funny um, because after I made the comment, I thought, oh, man, I felt like I was dogging the guy, but but I really wasn't. Uh, but I had I made a comment on there. He was using a, a, a scale tip from Razor Tip, and it's one of the ones that I use occasionally or I used to use. And when he showed the, the uh, fish that he carved them on, I noticed that he was using the tip backwards and <laughs> I kind of giggled to myself and I think I commented on the post I said should we tell him he's using it backwards or something like that and uh, so I went on and a little just wasn't 10 or 15 minutes later I was on my YouTube channel uh, looking at reading comments and then I saw one from Richard uh, Vorio and he said, he was commenting on the, on the, I thought it was from the walleye or, or, the, or the bass, I can't remember which, but he commented, uh, said something like good work and make sure the scale tips on the right way or something like that. And then it clicked on me and I went back and, no, and realized Richard Vorio was choose your own path and he had posted one of his own videos. So Anyway, it was uh, it was kind of funny. I messaged him and said, "Hey, I hope you don't think I was busting your chops or making fun of you because I wasn't. It was just uh, I just noticed it was on backwards and it was, it, it kind of struck me as funny, uh, but I didn't I didn't intend it as a as a insult. But um, anyway, we started chatting back and forth and uh, and we kind of become friends on on. Uh, on Facebook and we chat quite a bit but um, the other day he had done a video and he gave me a shout out and, and was directing people to my channel and uh, was really giving me good compliments and I really appreciated it I've actually got a couple of people that came over from his channel to check mine out and uh, so I kind of thought I might change return the favor so go check him out uh it's called choose your own path and he's um he's he's energetic and you i think you'll enjoy his passion for I mean, you'll see it you'll enjoy his passion for what he's doing so go over and give him a, a thumbs up and a like and maybe a positive comment and encourage him and uh because i know it helps me out when when people encourage me and, and give me a good comment so uh, go over and do that for him. I'd appreciate it. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to get started on this and um, get the camera turned around here and uh, get started.
got the um, the fins mostly done and um, I still need to do a little bit of detail work on it and then uh, and then I'll need to burn in the detail of the ends of the fins um, on these walleye they have more on the soft dorsal they have more rays than like a standard bass or crappie um, they were anywhere from 20 to 22 rays on here and the same with the with the anal fin there's um, 15 where he's on the bass there's 13 or 14 their pectoral fins are about the same as a bass they have they'll have four or five main rays that split out pretty wide i didn't add much motion and um animation in the fins this time since it's the first time i've done a crappie i just want to kind of concentrate on the anatomy and the fin placement and just and get them close and then uh the next one i do i'll do a, a much bigger crappie and i'll be able to uh to add some animation in the fins like i say i'm not going to worry about adding a lot of motion in there this time um so all i got left to do is the tail and then um and then cut the grooves in the back to um to mount them so um i'll uh, i'll do that here in a few minutes i'm actually going to quit for the night but for you it'll be uh just a few minutes mosquitoes are getting horrible out here <laughs> so anyway uh i'll catch y'all in a few minutes okay it's only been a second view but it's been two days for me <laughs> Uh, I actually worked on, did a little bit of work on some African cichlids that I'm working on. Um, kind of dove into doing some aquarium fish for uh, um, the commission. So, um, but you can see that here. I'm going to put it here in a block if you want to watch that later. Um, but today I'm going to uh, finish working on the fins, uh, mounting the fins into the body. And uh, I still got to finish the tail, and then I probably will cut the top of the head off and work start working on the inside of the mouth detail. So get the camera turned around here and get started. All right, y'all have to excuse my fan noise. I've got a lot of fans. <laughs> See, <laughs> not fans as in people. Fans as of keeping the mosquitoes off of me, keeping me keeping me cool but I need to uh, get this started here and draw my motion so he's swimming this way so I want this to I'm gonna draw my center line here I wanted to have a little bit of a flip out towards the side. Since that's the way it's going, I'm going to go ahead and carry that around. So, it'll have a little bit of a motion. I didn't put much... I, I said this earlier, but I'm not putting much motion in the uh the body fins because um this is almost an experimental piece for me because i haven't ever carved a cro uh, crappie a walleye before so i'm gonna keep it fairly simple i'm a bit concentrating mostly on anatomy the shape and uh the next one i carve will be of course it'll be bigger and then I'll I'll make sure I add motion in the fins then. So um, let me get started taking some of this material down here.
I'm constantly checking for the thickness here because I don't want to blow through this one like I did on the bats. So I'm trying to keep it nice and steady. It's going to be a little thicker at the base and then tapers down quite a bit at the end. But it still needs to come down a little bit at the base, so I'm going to bring it down a little bit more. And then I'll blend the uh, the caudal peduncle. There's the $10,000 word for the day. The caudal peduncle in with the body to the fin. crazy areas where if I'm carving against the, with the grain this way it wants to raise it but when I'm carving this way it leaves a nice smooth finish but if I've got it this way going this way it raises it aggravates me to death But that's part of it. You have to deal with it. I think I'm going to uh, I'm going to save the fin rays. I'll do that off camera, and I think I'm going to uh, start doing the slots for the fins so that I can get this um, that part done. I also want to try and maybe cut the top of the head off today and work on the inside there. Um, I've lost track on how much footage I got on this, so I don't want the, I don't want this video going too long. So um, I'm going to stop on this for right now and get the slots in. So I need to go get my reference. So this goes up pretty far to the front of the body. So we've got the center line drawn on here. Make sure it's going to be straight up and down, top of the back. And then the soft dorsal will be back here. Probably need to be a little bit over this way. So
cut that one just a little too thin on the slot or the tab but it'll be all right it'll it'll fit tight once i put the once i put the uh epoxy putty in there that's going to do it for part four um i've got the fins done i still need to carve the detail in the tail fin and these aren't attached they're just they're just sitting in their little slots and uh and you saw me cut the head off a while ago i was going to start carving the inside of the mouth today but i decided that i'm going to wait and look at some reference photos and kind of study some reference photos for a day or two before i start that so part four is going to be uh, burning scales and and then I'll show you I'll show a little bit of the carving of this uh, but I'm gonna make that one kind of short because you know how long do you want to watch me carve scales so but I'll show the beginning then I'll show the end uh, but anyway it's coming along um, I still haven't decided how I'm gonna do the teeth yet um, I'm, I'm thinking about using rose thorns but the roses I have here are too wide the thorns are too wide they look more like little shark fins and uh, plus they're black um, I know I can paint them but um, I learned a technique in one of the seminars back in May at the World Taxidermy and Fish Carving Championship um, a guy would use silicone and squirt a couple beads out then he st would stick a toothpick in it and pull up the little peaks and um, the deeper he pulled and pulled out, the bigger the peaks. So you got different sizes. So I'm going to experiment with that off camera too, just to see how that looks. If not, I'll just I'll just use uh, the rose thorns. But um, it's coming along. And uh, if you, but if you have any suggestions on how to do the teeth for this, um, please leave them in the comment section for me below. I'd appreciate it. Um, I did stop a little while working on this. Uh, mainly because it's so been so blasted hot out here, but I I got a commission to do uh, a couple of African cichlids, and um, I, I've done one already, or I've got it completed to the stage. It's ready to be painted, and that'll be uh, part two of that. So it's just going to be a two-part series, and you can catch the first one right in here somewhere um, if you want to go see that. Um, but a guy raises them breeds them and he asked me if i could do some for him so uh can't turn down the money <laughs> but anyway um so part four will be scales and uh inside of the mouth and then uh it'll be close to be ready to be painted then but again if you have any suggestions on how to do the teeth or anything about it uh please leave in the comment section for me below if you haven't already please hit that subscribe button and give me a thumbs up if you like these videos and I will see you on part four.